Hi everyone, how are you doing? Do you want to check with God whether you are growing spiritually? I don't think you should check with your pastor. I don't think you should check with your commitment to the work of God. I don't think you should check with your service alone. Can you just check with the word of God as we go into the measuring line of spiritual growth? God bless you as you listen. everyone how are you doing yeah, welcome to moments of encounter hope you've had a blessed week today i want to speak to someone out there on the measuring line of spiritual growth the measuring line of spiritual growth the day you give your life to christ you start a journey imagine your life like a seed being sown in god's presence after you give your life to christ some have given their life to Christ countless times. Some have struggled in the place of salvation. Now you go through the basic tenets of faith. You go through water baptism. Some still fall by the wayside. And for some, they still press on. You go through the basic principles, the rudiments, the word of God, living a holy life, consecration, stewardship. And from there, you get introduced to the ministry of the Holy Ghost which is the ministry of the hour. The truth is this. Imagine your life like a seed. All those processes, the process of planting, is the process of good ground, is the process of pruning, is the process of you growing. And there are so many believers who are out there that are in Christ, but they're not growing in Christ. And remember that spirituality is what matters to God. The Bible says those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Just like Jesus said to that woman, this is now that the Father is seeking those that will worship him, not just by their mouth, not just by their actions, but with a depth of God and a depth of spiritual knowledge. I want to speak to someone out there. Do you know that there's a measuring line of your spiritual growth? Your spiritual growth is how far you have grown in God. And our life as a believer, by the time we will meet God and our maker, one thing that we will need to show, one thing that we will need to present to God is our what? Our fruit in him. In Matthew 7 verse 15, the, Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruits. You will know people in the kingdom by their fruits. You will know people who are in the, on the Lord's side by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? It's not possible. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Remember, every fruit is a product of a growing tree. Every fruit is a product of growth. And one measuring line that Jesus has given us here is by your fruit. That is how you can say you are growing. There are so many believers who are praying. You see, a lot of people are joining prayer meetings, joining prayer calls, but yet they are not growing in Christ. A lot of people are teaching the word of God and they are teaching it <laughs> outside the concept of God but I tell you, some of them even have congregations gathering to hear them every day. But they are teaching them outside the concept of Christ. There are so many churches that is void of what I call growth. There are so many assemblies that are void of that place of called growth. Verse 18 tells me in that Matthew 7, it says, A good tree cannot be a bad fruit. Meaning, if you look at your life and you want to measure your spiritual growth, you don't have to go far. It's not how long you pray alone. It's not how long you fast. It's not how well you read your Bible. It's not how much attendance you give in church. By this simple analysis of Jesus, he said he just wants to see the fruit. He says, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This analogy tells us that Jesus has that capacity to cut anyone down. 
Some of the things we see in our world is people being cut down and being thrown into fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you and I will know them. I want to tell you that the measuring line of your spiritual growth, the measuring line of your spiritual growth in God is by your fruits and not by your works. It's by the fruits that you, as a believer, you are showing. Remember that we came from sin into Christ. We came from no God into godliness. We came from what I call worldliness into righteousness. We come from a place of what I call no love into divine love. How much more can God let us know that one way, one determining factor of your work with God, of your path with God, is in the level of fruit that you and I, we are bearing. And I present the measuring line to you today. When you read the book, of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the fruit, the, the, the kingdom, the gift of the spirit. When we look at that scripture, it tells us different dimensions of God's gift upon a man. Never mistake the gifts of God over your life as your growth in Christ. Jesus didn't say here that by their display, all the gifts that you have, word of knowledge, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of discernment, the gift of word of wisdom, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of working on miracles. I call these ones, those are the kingdom power. But there's something called the kingdom fruit, meaning you can display all this and the Lord is telling us that we should not be carried away. He's expressing it right there in his word that all those ones don't matter to him. The Bible says, beware of, they are prophets, but there's a force in front before the prophet. He says, who come to you in sheep's clothing? They will take every form of what? Of that clothing. But the Bible says, but inwardly, you can see that these are things that are exercised from within. Every fruit comes from a tree. It comes through the branch. If you plant mango now, what you plant is a seed. When you start seeing the tree, you can't say, you can just say mango tree, but there's no mango on it. You can call it that name. So it can be a Christian, but there's no fruit of Christ in you. And by that, we can't really measure. Nobody measures a man by how high he has risen. There's a lot of people that have grown bodily, but mentally they have not grown. Medically, they will give it a name. There are people who are growing in things, but yet when you check the fruits that we're talking about, these are displayed from within. When we're looking at the kingdom act, the kingdom culture, it has the outward value. That's what draws people to you. But do you know that when you look at the true word of God, when you look at the scripture, the God of heaven and earth, the God of heaven and earth is telling us here that we need to know everyone, not by their acts, not by their doings, not by their availability, but by their fruits. And one grace that has done justice to that, on what are these fruits that we are talking about? Meaning if I bring out the measuring line and I want to check my spiritual growth, if I want to check how well have I gone with God, how well have I been able to stand for God? How well will I say, well, I think I'm growing in Christ. I bring you this measuring line as given by that great God's servant in the book of Galatians. I want you to turn your Bible there. Galatians chapter 5. And that is the fruit. Jesus said by their fruit. And many years down the line, an inspiration came to Apostle Paul. And he began to declare, this is the fruit that we will know whether you are growing. It's not by how long. I've said it's not by your works alone. It says it comes from within. And he said this in that verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Remember where I started from? You begin a journey, your spiritual growth, and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They are fighting each other. If you are not growing, then you are in the flesh. 
And it says there that for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the spirit, meaning if you are growing, you are under the law. You are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are made manifest. He gave us all the works of the flesh. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before. And as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of what? Of the spirit, your spiritual growth. If you grow in spirit, you bring forth the fruit. So a lot of people don't understand that you don't just look at the earthly things you are doing. Look at the fruits. That's what matters. To love, meaning if God wants to put a measuring line on your spiritual growth, is how much you love, not just yourself, you love your neighbor as yourself. It's how much you show love. First Corinthians 13 is that definition of love. And I can spend countless hours for us to look at this. You're looking at the measuring line of what? Of your growth in Christ. A true definition of it will be found in that word, that book of love. If you look at that scripture and it tells us everything, are you really in that place? Are you growing in love? Let's start with love. He listed them there. It says it to you, the measuring line. What do you love? Are you living? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, do I speak with tongues of men and of angels? My God, you can see again, the kingdom power is there, but the kingdom fruits is not there. If I speak and I don't have charity, which is love, he says, I become as what? As a sounding brass. My God, so many sounding brass tongues, so many sounding brass church leaders, so many sounding brass believers and a clinging word, symbol. You know, have you ever, one of the ways anybody can be annoying to you is to get symbol and slam it in your ears. Maybe when you are sleeping or when you are resting, when you just hear it clinging, it can annoy you. Even in music, if you see somebody who has a bit of knowledge about instruments, when somebody uses the symbol too much, it becomes annoying. It becomes, it changes the whole thing. It comes just at intervals because it's not meant to take over everything. And the Bible says you become like that. And it says, though I have the gift of prophecy, kingdom power, but no kingdom fruit. And he says it, and I understand all mysteries. My God, what of knowledge? You see, so when you are seeing all these things, what of knowledge, all those designs, all those things that people are showing you, my God, oh, have you, have you met this guy? He can't prophesy. I, oh, have you met this guy? Oh, he is gifted. He, he gives you a word of knowledge. He's giving you back to back. And he understands all mysteries. He told me everything that happened to me. It's still not it. The Bible says, if he does not have the love of God and all knowledge, and do I have faith again? This is another gift that he has listed. And he said, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity to God, to the one that you are serving. My God says what? I am nothing. And do I bestow all my goods to feed the poor? That's what people that give, give us. They can give their eyes out. But we are giving. Some are giving because they've heard pastors say, if I don't give, I cannot receive. Some have heard pastors say, if I don't give out, I cannot enjoy, I cannot enjoy prosperity. So it's a conditional giving. You are not giving out of love. You are giving out of the condition that has been placed before you. If you don't pay your tithe, if you don't pay your offering, and though I give my body to be burned, how does that make sense? How can somebody give his body to be burned? And yet, God is still saying that it's still not love. It's, it's difficult. Meaning there are some people that can burn for people. They do everything for people, but yet they don't really love and have no charity. It says what? It profited nothing. So many people are stuck in the place of, I give a lot, but I can't sense any release of God into me. 
The Bible says it loud there that charity suffer long is kind. Do you know what that means? When you love, you can bear the pain. You can suffer anything for with any time, even because you love God. He said it is kind. Do you know what that means? You're just a kind person. You are kind to a fault. That's the measuring line. The Bible says, charity envieth not. Meaning, sometimes, some people's prayer points is rooted in envy. Lord, because this God, this person has this, can I have it? Because this person got this, can I get it? The Bible says, charity, my God, vented not itself. Meaning, it doesn't think I love itself. Do you know what that means? There are so many people that to them they are, they are so they are so they, they think so highly of themselves he does not vented not let me let me just help somebody out there so that you can understand this scripture in a better way in a better level when we are looking at the word charity the bible says what it, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. Another, the, the King James Version says it clearly there. It says it is not puffed up. You know, some people, when you talk to them, they, they just get puffed up and say, do you know who you are talking to? Do you know who I am? Do you, do you know? You know, if people talk to you the way you don't like and you have puffed up, the word of the Lord said, I should tell you that. Mm -mm, you've missed it. Love does not think highly of itself. Love, he doesn't raise itself. It doesn't envy anybody. Bible says, does not behave itself unseemly, perfect character. Seek it not our own and is not easily provoked. That's the love of God we are talking about. Think it no evil. Rejoice it not iniquity. You know, you can say I love, but this is the true definition of love. Love is not until you slam somebody on the bed and you get sexual with them, that's not love. It says it's not in that level. The Bible says, rejoice it not in equity, but rejoice it in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things. Some of us, we are choosing what to believe in the Bible. That's not the true love. Hopeth what? All things, endureth all things. You know one thing? Charity never fails. But when whether there be prophecies, it will still fail. Those giftings, whether there be tongues, it will cease. We don't need to speak in tongues in heaven. Whether it be knowledge, what do you want to have knowledge again when you get to heaven? Whether it is called what? Prophecy. The Bible says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that is perfect to come, then shall which is part shall be done away. I'm praying for someone. I mean, you get deep in the love of God. I present this measuring line to you. Can you put yourself and put your life against this definition of love and ask yourself, am I in love? Do I really love God? Just one measuring line on your spiritual growth. That is it. The kingdom fruit. The kingdom fruit number one is love. And I want you to know that God wants you to show that love. He wants you to begin to live. Can you just put yourself understand now and put all this definition of love do i get puffed up can i endure things god some people are now god is just making you to endure tough times that's how people backslide that's how people fall away that's how people leave god can you look at these scriptures that i've read and have you and as you look at it deeply can you say that are you have people look at you and say you are rude and do you do you look at people say oh why is it that if it's not your way there's no way Look at what NNT says. He says he does not demand his own way. It's meaning you don't love. This is the reason why so many marriages are broken down. The Bible says he's not irritable and he keeps no record of what? Of being wrong. This is the lifestyle of believers every day. And the only thing we see is the prophecy. When somebody can speak in tongues, when somebody can shake head, the Bible says you're not growing. That's not how we measure you. It's the measuring line of spiritual growth. I pray for you. And as you listen to this word, may you imbibe the love culture and may the love of God that we are talking about, that will be your measuring line into the grace of God, into your next level. I pray may it be found in you in the name of Jesus. 
Can you just burn and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, help my love level. Show me grace. Let me grow in love. It's just about myself. I'm a selfish person, Lord. I think I love myself. When I can't sense the new things, the good things, I just get troubled. I throw the, the caution away and I just run around disturbing your grace and making mockery of your salvation over my life. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, I pray for your children. Please teach them love and let them grow in love. And that as we put our life across this measuring line, may we find growth. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. <laughs>